The more complicated something is, the more easy it is to interfere with. Human knowledge is complicated, therefore it's easy to mess around with. And what the modernists do is they mess around with the process of knowing. Okay, then, um, turn now to Aristotle. Um, the Aristotelian sense is in green. We come down, we're going to read down the, down the left-hand column. The realistic analysis of the mysterious combination in man of intellection and sensation. Then you've got the Aristotelian man over left with a little halo above his head. Whereas, look, just flash over to the Kantian man and you've got two little horns on his head. You do well to laugh. <laughs> you do well to laugh. Congratulations if you laughed. Um, then, what you've got opposite the Aristotelian man, you've got the mind inside. Whatever is more than matter is here coloured orange. What is more than matter is the form of a thing, actually the form of a thing. We can't go into that because it's another whole story, but Aristotle, Aristotle has got, corresponding to his an analysis of knowledge, is his analysis of things. And he analyzes that material things are combined of form and matter. Form and matter. The form is what forms the matter to be what it is. The matter is the, the, the element that makes things material, but that isn't in itself anything. Matter, you, you can't even, you, you can't imagine matter. You can't get a picture in your mind of matter. You've got, you've got, you, but if you think of a great big blob, that's the nearest we can get. You see how our minds have to function in material pictures. You get a material picture of something, then you begin to understand it. So matter, in any case, is, is what makes material things material. It's absent in um, God and the angels. It's completely absent in God and the angels. But it's present from man through animal, vegetable, mineral material. is what thing, makes things material. But it's characterless, completely characterless, or completely formless in itself. What makes the matter of this to be a little book is the form of the book. What makes this, the matter of this uh, to, to be paper is the form of paper. This is an A4 sheet. So that's, the, that's its form. But, and then there's some matter. But if I burn it, if I burn the sheet, the form of the sheet completely disappears and the form of cinders or ashes takes over. But it, it, you can't say that there's creation and annihilation. There's obviously something common to both ends of the change. And that what, what is common is formless. It needs, one, it needs one form at one end of the change, another form at the other end of the change, but the two forms are, are, share the same matter. So there's something, when, when a, change, a material change happens, there is something that's common to both ends of the change, which is formless. It's formed with one form at the beginning of the change, it's formed with another form at the end of the change. That is, that is matter. Therefore, material things are composed of form and matter, and form is what makes the thing what it is. The form gives to the thing its whatness. So the form is in blue, the f and the form is not material. Uh, the matter is material, of course. The form is not material. Therefore, it's the form of the thing that the senses can't pick up and don't pick up. They simply pick up the sense appearances. And everything material will have sense appearances or sense phenomena. So, the sensation corresponds to the material appearances. The intellection corresponds to the intelligible form of the thing. And the thing is combined of an intelligible form and a non-intelligible matter. Matter is not intelligible. So things are composed of form and matter, and to that corresponds the mind picking up the form and the senses picking up the matter, picking up the material phenomena, the, the appearances of the material, of the matter. So in the material object, colored, colored black, is what it is by its immaterial form. And so the material is colored black, the immaterial form is colored orange which is informing the matter and composing the object, putting together the object. The form and the matter together put together the object. The senses receive passively whatever is sensible of the material object. Uh, passable means um, passively without acting on it. So the, 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 the senses, my, my there's a sunlit surface of the, of the building outside. My eyes don't make that sunlit. My eyes don't make that white yellow. 
with a, with a red tin roof. My eyes don't make that. My eyes receive that. That's why you see in the picture black arrows coming from the sense phenomena to the eye of Frankenstein. It's called him Frankenstein. Um, so the, the eyes, the, 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 uh, in this respect, the uh, object is active and the sen senses, the sense object is active and the senses are passive, which is why I sense things as they are. I'm all the time sensing. If you go into a modern university and begin to learn philosophy in a modern university, do you know the first thing they will do to you, poor little students? You think your senses are reliable, don't you? Uh, yes, Professor. Well, I'm telling you they aren't. Oh, Professor. For instance, have you ever tried putting a stick in a swimming pool and you once you saw the stick suddenly went crooked? Yes, Professor. Well, that's do you know perfectly well. You pulled the stick out and it wasn't crooked at all, was it? Yes, Professor. So when the, your eyes were deceiving you, weren't they? Yes, Professor. And then sometimes you've had a nightmare, haven't you? Yes, Professor. And a big bear was about to eat you. Yes, Professor. So your senses were deceiving you, weren't they? Yes, Professor. So we're going to forget about senses, all right? We're going to make our philosophy. We're going to make our own philosophy. We're not going to care about common sense. Bah! Common sense. Ugh. And the professor mocks common sense. And the poor, prof the poor student, oh, oh, I feel so I can't rely on my senses. He relies on them all day long. The professor relies on them all day long. When the professor gets out of bed and he come, comes downstairs and his wife has made him with some black, warm black liquid, he knows that that's coffee. He smells it to check and he, tell, he relies on his senses all day long. It's only when he's in the university, teaching philosophy in the university, that he begins to spout nonsense. And not only nonsense, but nonsense that rots the guts of these poor students, that rots the mind of these poor students. And the poor students, when they went to philosophy, when they went to university, they said to themselves, oh, I'm going to study philosophy because philosophy is the deepest and most interesting of the subjects in the university. That's quite true. It should be. It ought to be. If it's true, it's the most precious of all the subjects. That's for certain. But if it's, if it's nonsense, like modern philosophy is, the students are going to be fed a, a, what, what, a stone instead of bread. They're going to get stones instead of bread. They came to the philosophy department in the home for bread, and all they're given is stones. The, modern, the, modern, the philosophy sections of modern universities all follow Kant. None of them follow St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas is true. Kant is profoundly false, wretchedly false, corruptedly false, nauseatingly false. Any, any healthy mind vomits Kant, if you can understand it. A Kant is trash, junk, poison, and he is the king of the philosophy of all the modern universities. That's where we're at. And that's why the youth today are in such a mess, because they're fed stones instead of bread. They're not learning Thomas Aquinas anywhere. They're not given the Catholic faith. They're turned away from the faith. In the schools, it's forbidden to speak to them of God. No, no teacher is allowed to speak in the schools of God. That's certainly the case in some, you know, I'm, it's very likely the case in, in over here in Europe, certainly in the United States. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The only thing that God can do with this present state of civilization is wash it out and start again, or f burn it out. Because when he washed it, he had to wash it out once with Noah, the time of Noah. And we've reached the same stage, we're only worse because we're, we're, they were pre-Christian pagans and now today we're post-Christian pagans, which is much worse. Um, therefore, God is going to have to burn it out. He promised at the time of the Noah, you read it in the scripture, he promised that he wouldn't wash, wash out humanity again. He promised that the day would follow day, uh, night, day and night would continue, the sun, so on, so on, that, all that would continue. He wouldn't again, monkey, excuse me the expression, Lord, uh, he wouldn't again interrupt it, th those process, that, that normal process of nature. But he never said he wouldn't want burn it out with fire. And in 1973 in Japan, Our Lady, Akita, Our Lady said, there's going to be a rain of fire, R-A-I-N, like, like a rain, instead of a rain of water, a rain of fire. That's all, that's, fit. that's all that modern humanity is fit for. It's terrible, that's, and that's what's going to straighten out this mess that we've got today. And nothing less is going to straighten it out. So, 
So this, because an interesting thing that St. Thomas Aquinas says in the Summa, in, in the Summa Theologia, people who mess around with basic morals like heterosexuality and homosexuality, people who mess around with basic morals are just like people messing around with the principles of the mind. So if you messing, he, he uses messing around with the mind as a measure of gravity. Mm -hmm. And only messing around with the mind is comparable to messing around with morals, to basic morals, like, like heterosexuality and homosexuality. Therefore, you can turn that around. Homosexuality is a measure of the great gravity of messing around with the mind, of teaching falsehoods about how the mind works, teaching falsehoods about the basics of the mind. Kant was immediately followed by Hegel, who said a thing is and a thing can be and not be at the same time. That's messing around with the basic principle of, of human thinking. The basic principle of human thinking is the law of non-contradiction. A thing cannot be and not be at the same time. That's common sense. A cat cannot be a cat and a dog at the same time. Either it's a cat or it's a dog. But oh no, no, your modern professor will say, oh, a cat. Of course it can be a dog. It's evolving into a dog all the time. You see where evolution comes in? All things are evolving. All things are in constant evolution. Nonsense. Things are what they are. They're not what they're evolving. They do change. But when they change, they change from what they were to what they will be. But they aren't the same. The same they aren't different things at the same time. They, a thing can be one. This, I, I can be ignorant of Chinese and then I can learn Chinese. But when I'm ignorant of Chinese, I'm not, I don't know it. And when I know it, I don't unknow it. I'm not ignorant of it. So a thing can. Modern philosophy teaches nonsense. And it's very grave. And that's why this, the students are faggots. And they're all into, they've all, as they've undone the principles of the mind, so they've undone principles of morals. You teach false philosophy in these universities, and it's inevitable that the kids are going to be lost, or faggots. Why not? Sexuality is not for children, sexuality is for pleasure. I get just as much pleasure out of a boy as of a girl, or a girl out of a girl as out of a boy. <gasps> that's where we're at. Horrendous.